I'm Igor Grant and I have the privilege of serving as the third chair of the Department of Psychiatry here at UCSD. As the department approaches its 50th anniversary, we thought it would be opportune to take a look at how, in a few decades, this department became one of the most prominent academic psychiatry departments in the world. We might ask, how was this accomplished? The answer lies in the vision and practices set by the founders. And in this video, you uh, will hear from uh, some of those founders. You'll hear from Dr. Arnold Mandel, who was the first chair of the Department of Psychiatry. He will outline how the vision of an academic department that bridged uh, basic neuroscience with uh, state-of-the-art practice was founded. And you will hear from Dr. Lewis Judd, the second chair of the Department of Psychiatry, how he and his colleagues proceeded to build this remarkable place. As we approach our 50th anniversary, I hope you will enjoy this video uh, of the founding of the department and its uh, first decade of being. Thank you. On November 18, 1960, the University of California, San Diego is officially established on the grounds of former military base Camp Matthews. The fledgling university would go through years of construction to facilitate the needs of a world-class university. Early research and faculty quality, particularly in the sciences, was essential to shaping the focus and culture of the university. Faculty recruits had already made significant research breakthroughs. In late 1968, the School of Medicine added one last department, the Department of Psychiatry, and the recruitment began. And I was combining neurophysiology and psychotherapy, and they were looking for someone who was a psychoanalyst that ran an ultra centrifuge. And, and in 1968, there weren't very many psychoanalysts that ran a centrifuge. I think there was one other. And because it had to satisfy both the biological sciences, which the medical school grew out of, and also at the same time satisfy the clinicians in town that were at that time very psychoanalytically oriented. And I had had psychoanalytic training and was doing a brain enzymology and protein separation and so forth. And so one day I was walking between the Jefferson Memorial and the Lincoln Memorial with the chairman of psychiatry at, at uh, UCLA. No, at that time he was chairman in Oklahoma. I was 32. And as we were walking, he said, Arnie, he says, how would you like to be chairman of that new department at UCSD? I says, come on, you're kidding. That's going to be the great medical school. It's going to be a great center of science. Are you kidding? He says, no, I'm not kidding. And then he told me we're looking for a psycho psychoanalyst who runs an ultra centrifuge. And so that's how, the, how it happened, how it started. What, what reason uh, Arnie Mandel had for hiring me as the first faculty member of this department, that is, why did, he, um, why did he do this? He decided that he needed to find somebody who established the fact that he wanted to make a department that was interested in modern science and the application of modern science uh, to psychiatry. So he started looking around for somebody uh, who he, he thought would represent that and that was also naive enough to uh, take him on and come to this wilderness on the coast of California and take part in the founding of this medical school. For the first seven months until Lou Judd came, uh, I was the faculty. Arnold was the chair, you know, orchestrating, and I was running the clinic. I was teaching the classes, although there were other people from other departments who were teaching. Here at UCSD, because of Arnie's interest and my presence, the Department of Psychiatry was recognized as a real player in the scientific activities of the medical school and the campus from the very beginning. I was recruited to UCSD by a friend of mine, Arnold Mandel, who was the first chairman here. The first things that need to be addressed were, we had no 
clinical services whatsoever. And we did not have a teaching program for medical students or for postgraduates. Okay. In January of 1977, I took a position in the chair's office. Prior to that, I'd been working at the Salk Institute. I came in June of 1972. At the time, there were probably 30 faculty members. Dr. Mandel um, brought Dr. Judd from, I think it was UCLA or Irvine? I can't UCLA. Oh, he was brought in to start and run all of the teaching programs. His main, um, I think, area of recruitment when he first came was to be the assistant chair in charge of education. And then a few years after that, they became co-chairs. Our recruitment uh, criteria was to uh, make sure that people were productive and creative and, uh, and uh, knew what good scholarship was and that they, above all, were nice people, collegial, cooperative, willing to help others. It's dangerous to have fellowship be a criteria of recruitment when you're looking for excellence. And so the balance, I think Lou put it well, that, that uh, a combination of empathy and awareness of the human condition and that sort of thing doesn't have to be alien from the rigorous science. And we've managed to, to find people that also were humans. I contacted doctors Mandel and Judd and uh, then yeah, interviewed here uh, and uh, was the first uh, director of the uh, San Diego uh, VA psychiatry program. What we found was the more attention we paid to our residents, to the educational mission, the better the other two missions, research and clinical wit. So that became a kind of tradition in that our residents were like our children. They were going to be our progeny. They were going to be our legacy. And um, uh, so residency training always occupied a very special place uh, uh, in this department. Because one of the things that was very clear when this department was formed, at least when I came in 1971, was the thing that made me most interested in coming here. And it was that we're research oriented and have always been research oriented. So what I've seen over the years is as the department grows, this tension, and it's a creative tension, it's, it's, not, it's not something horrible, this, this creative tension that occurs as responsibilities develop, research develops, various people are recruited into the department, the residency grows, the clinical, the clinical programs grow, and then each year or so, there's a way of trying to make the optimal compromise to make this whole thing work. When I first came here, um, I initially was assigned for the first year uh, to uh, run the consult liaison service at, um, uh, at uh, the VA. And we did that for a year, I did that for a year, and then ultimately uh, became the director of the inpatient unit down at the, um, what used to be the county hospital, became the Hillcrest um, General um, Psych, uh, general Hospital. When I was finishing up my residency, I spoke to my chair and I said, I'd like an academic career. I want to move back to the West Coast since I grew up in Vancouver in Canada. And he said, well, have you ever heard of a, a place called La Jolla? I said, I can't say that I have. He said, well, it's kind of near San Diego and uh, they've just opened a new medical school there. And they've just recruited a new chair who's really a crackerjack person. And that person I know is looking into, you know, developing a new department. I said, okay, cool, Go get me an interview. And so the rest is history. I've been here ever since 1972. The department is really, I think it's, its greatness lies in the fact that it's pluralistic. And, it, and as, I, as I thought about what makes the department unique and, and, and so successful is that the department really embraces what is the entire portfolio of the National Institute of Mental Health. It is NIMH. 
NIMH is the institute that supports mental health research, but at NIMH, it's recognized that not only do we support clinical studies of drugs and, and, and follow and study patients directly and look for better ways to treat them, but we also do basic research about how the, how cognition is organized and how the brain works to support functions that are important in mental health, like memory and thinking and decision making and planning and those kinds of functions. Filling the shoes of Dr. Lewis Judd, who <clears throat> you know um, steered this department for 30 six years, I guess, uh, is not an easy uh, set of shoes to fill. But it seemed like based on his foundation, there were a number of things we could accomplish that would make the department even better. Um, and one area had to do with our clinical services. One of the uh, things I did uh, as one of my early acts is to actually set up a division of clinical psychiatry. We recruited to have somebody head that division and also a co-director for the division. And so um, that has allowed us to grow these clinical programs. A great example um, is our eating disorders program. Actually, Dr. Judd before me recruited Dr. Walter Kay, who is an international authority on eating disorders. But the beauty of the program is that um, they do research on eating disorders. They sh find out what works, what doesn't work and then they apply that within their own program. And that program has been a tremendous success. And I'm hoping to use a model like that in developing uh, state-of-the-art treatments for mood disorders, early identification of young people who are at risk to develop these psychoses, how can we intervene before the psychosis takes root. So on and on, we have a number of programs where we're trying to use research findings to apply to uh, clinical problems. One thing that, that, that has been great um, uh, about working in this department uh, is the very close collaboration that we've enjoyed with the uh, San Diego VA uh, hospital um, health system, as it's now called. Uh, and so I was one of the young faculty who was able to start services in the VA, uh, in my case, outpatient services. Uh, this was, of course, the um, uh, ending years of the war in Vietnam, uh, and we started getting a lot of veterans uh, coming in uh, requiring mental health services, and uh, often they had very complex problems, um, substance use, uh, post-traumatic stress problems, and, and other kinds of issues. That, the theme of legitimacy was, the, was one of the earliest uh, themes. Uh, it was dictated by the excellence of the faculty at UCSD. Uh, uh, so is, is psychiatry, is social work, uh, low class, you know, can, could bartenders and beauticians do just as well the kind of business? Or is it really something unique? And subjective man doesn't have a specialty in medicine except for psychiatry. And it turns out to be the most elegant kind of brain research. You're reaching for consciousness. To have a floor, half a floor in this building was, was a statement that amazed most people, that you could have this, all these laboratories that had to do with the brain. And that did give us legitimacy on campus. So what do I think our future is? I think that the future of the department, especially under somebody like Igor Grant, who knows our department so well, that I think that the future of our department is very rosy regarding clinical delivery and regarding teaching. And I think that compared to other places, other medical schools in the United States and other departments of psychiatry, we are in a somewhat better position than most to keep a solid research program going. But I want to tell you, unless the federal funding changes, that's going to be a real challenge from the research side. Another aspect of this department, which is a tribute to Lou Judd, is he has set up a department where people are supposed to be collegial. You hear about academics and that supposedly people stab each other in the back? Not in this department. In this department, people help each other out. They may have disagreements, may not go out to dinner with everybody in the department, but people here like each other and they help each other when we have problems. And so I lived long enough to see my delusion 
several of them, but the biggest one is this department. My goodness. We seeded this, 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 and this. Come back and, and it's just amazing what Lou and now Igor and that faculty uh, has done. It's just it's so gratifying. I just dropped in the seeds, but, but, but to see plants like that is very gratifying, just very gratifying.